Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we are gonna talk about Taylor Swift's Bahamas getaway with Travis Kelsey. I know, girl, I know you're at Taylor saturation point. I am too, we all are. We thought our long national nightmare was over of like hyper Taylor coverage. I get it. We're not gonna dwell too much on the Taylory aspect of this topic, but it is a topic we haven't talked about, which is how to vacation with your boyfriend without wanting to murder that man. Without just wanting to leave him in some sort of detention center? Because, sweetheart, I've been there. You guys know, if you follow me on Instagram, I travel a lot. I am very good at it. <laughs> and I have very little tolerance for people who aren't. Very, very little. And sometimes that person is the man you're sleeping with and you have to share a hotel room with. Listen, I'm gonna give you some of my expert travel tips on how to make couples vacations go amazingly and why traveling with someone is like kind of a telling thing about your relationship. If you're preparing to do a little getaway, whether it's an overnight road trip or two weeks in Italy or something with your man, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to make it go smooth. And if you have found that maybe things have not been ideal in the past, not been ideal in the past, I can tell you how to smooth it out from here and course correct so that you guys can get on the same page, the same passport page. That joke really didn't go anywhere, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and uh, how to ensure that your couple's trip doesn't end, yeah, with uh, someone locked up abroad, okay? But before we get started, I have a dispatch from the Nadine News Network. It's our just like, kind of good news for like social issues, um, things going on in the world that come from my mom. Last time I told you guys about, and this is like stuck with me and I have repeated this so many times that hedge funds, basically Wall Street, like Wall Street financial conglomerates own 27% of the houses in the United States. So when you're trying to buy a house, you think you're bidding against a person, you're not, you're bidding against a fucking bank. And guess, guess who has more money? Gee, I don't know. So. That is trying to be changed. There's a, a Democratic bill in the House that is trying to ban that. But here's some good news. Trees are making a comeback. Trees. So in America's colonial history, there was like massive deforestation, like when America first became a country. And then around the 1920s, when people started moving from farms into cities, trees started to rebound because people weren't working the land as much. It was the, kind of the industrial revolution, like sort of. And then it began a very aggressive uh, reforestation campaign in the US, like planting tons of trees. And it's, it's really, you ready for a pun? It's bearing fruit. There it is, that was the pun. And especially in the Eastern United States, the trees coming back are really helping to stabilize the climate crisis. So this is amazing news. And all of these new trees help cool the Eastern part of the United States by one to two degrees Celsius every year. That's a big deal. Like that's a really big, huge deal. So our trees are coming back and you know, that means amazing things for, you know, the flora and the fauna and the bee, literally the birds and the bees. So also if you are like really jazzed about these kinds of things, the Biden admin is setting up the new America Climate Corps. So if you wanna, you know, there's like the Peace Corps and you know, stuff like that. If you wanna do things for the environment, they are hiring and training 20,000 people in clean energy, climate, conservation, all of that good stuff. So, you know, if you wanna kind of give back and get some training and do some good, I don't know, I just thought that that was really cute. It's one of those things I think about and I'm like, oh, it's like those sliding doors moment. You're like, I could have taken that totally different path in my life and just been like crunchy shell and like work in the land. And then I look at my Chanel bags and I'm like, no, I couldn't. That is for some other people. I just don't know that that's <laughs> for me. But listen, if you're interested, like look up the American Climate Corps. It could be something, I don't know. Maybe this is like, if you're taking a gap year or something, this could be really cool. Anyway, so that made me happy. And also wanna remind you guys, if you need some one-on-one -on -one help with me, head to passive.com, link down below. If you need some help, from a mindset queen. Our mindset guru, Laura St. John, her manifestation courses are now open. Go ahead and sign up down below and save 20% when you use my code. All right, Taylor, Trav, Bahamas, bikinis, sun and fannies, sunbird. Why did I say fannies? Anyway, these two were in the Bahamas trying to enjoy a romantic getaway out of the public eye. And of course, someone be taking pictures and that sucks. I, I always feel bad for celebrities, you know, like that must be so weird. I have a degree of infamy here in Montana and people take my picture when I go out. And if, if my friends are out and they say my name, 
people take their picture and like send it to these like shitty hate sites. It's like, can you all just get a life? Can you get a life? Uh, no, the answer is no. And I feel bad kind of, you know, that we like extrapolate things from just these candid photos, but there is stuff to learn. You know, we're not here to like shred Taylor's bikini body. She looks great. He looks good too. Actually, do you, okay. Does he look like an athlete? I feel like sometimes football players, like which athletes? Okay, let's play a slutty game. If you were to strip athletes from every sport, like hockey, baseball, football, soccer, rugby, if you were to strip them naked, which ones look the most like an athlete? Do we need to throw in golf in there? Don't nobody want to say that. What athletes do you think look the most athletic? I would say maybe soccer players, but they're, it's all like down, it's all like low. You know, they've got kind of like thin arms, maybe football players, but those dudes can be like big. They can look just like thick and kind of fatty. Not baseball players. They look like plumbers. I'm sorry, they don't look like athletes. They don't look like athletes. Rugby players, daddy, daddy. Hockey players, pretty daddy also. Yeah, they're pretty, because they gotta have the upper body. Anyway, am I ovulating? I don't know. No, I'm just, I'm just Kirkland signature slutty today. Want to talk about boys. Okay, so they were in the Bahamas and they looked really cute. You know, she's like got her cup, she's drinking in the ocean. Like if you've ever been on this kind of vacation, on this vacation with your boyfriend, ugh. I mean, they're great, you know? And maybe you take some Mexican diet pills, you're all messed out running around the all-inclusive resort. Not that, I read that, I read that on Reddit someplace, but it can be just really fun. And then like you spend the whole day in the sun, you're kind of drunk and then you take the nap. You know the nap, the nap. Like it's the white sheets and the breeze is blowing and you're just drifting in and out and like you're just like kind of sun drunk and it's like, oh, there's nothing better than that. There's nothing better. And I have to say real quick, can we just put it to rest that this is a PR relationship? I, I call me naive. I just don't think it is. Like, if there was someone I was only dating for like clout, I sure as fuck wouldn't go to an island with them. I just wouldn't, you know? I wouldn't, like, why would you do that? And it's like, well, maybe she planted these photos. I don't know, dude, maybe she did. I think maybe they're actually just in love. Do I think that they're the best fit for the entire rest of their lives? I don't know. I mean, She's such an alpha and she's so ruthless and he's like a golden retriever. Maybe that's an excellent fit. I don't know. Do, do alphas only ever need alphas? Not that he's a beta, he's not a beta, but I don't think he has like the teeth. You know what I mean? That she does. Also, can we just talk about my background real quick? I am hating what's happening. I've hired an interior designer. And here I was like, oh, the X is too far back and it just looks like, oh, doesn't matter because even if the X comes forward, it doesn't say XO, it says OX. You know, my hair looks good though. And it's like one miracle at a time sometimes, right? Okay, let's talk about travel. I have had some fantastic trips with boys and I have some with my one X. After one, I literally looked at him and I said, I don't think I love you anymore. He's like, what? I'm like, you have been a nightmare on this trip. He was combat ineffective, as they say. He couldn't print a boarding pass. He couldn't figure out how to put the bag tags on. He had to get on a flight, a 7 a.m. flight, with a coffee, scalding hot coffee, filled, filled to the tippy top, <laughs> splashing down the aisle, oh, I burned myself, swinging his backpack around, hitting people in the face, he was like a giant 220 pound toddler. And I was his mommy. That is how you feel when you travel with someone who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. You feel like their parent. Ooh, how sexy. But you know what? Let's rewind it, let's rewind it a little bit. I said at the beginning that traveling with someone is very illuminating and it will show you things that maybe you don't always wanna see, but you need to see. One of my best friends and I, we have always talked about guys and referred to something we call the airport test. Because at an airport, it is a pressure cooker, like hyper, hyper scenario of real life stressors. It's all coming together, right? 
You have a ton of people. You have variables outside of your control. You have massive disruption. Everything's fucking expensive and kind of confusing. And this is if you're in an airport where it's everyone's speaking your own language. Put you in an airport in South Korea, all bets could be off. And my friend Becca, she's like, my airport test is, I've got a baby, the flight's canceled. I look at him and say, fix it. The baby's melting down. The passengers are melting down. The weather's melting down. Fix it. Is he going to be able to do that? Is he going to be a net positive and make the situation better? Or is he going to make the situation worse? Is he going to be another crying baby? Is he going to be another liability and another thing I will have to worry about? And it's crazy because you don't have to travel with a guy to run this test in your mind. And when you run it, you're going to be like, fuck. Or you're going to be like, no, he'd fix it. He'd know what to do. He would tell me, you sit down with the baby, watch the bags. I will be back in 20 minutes when we're rebooked. Or vice versa. You go stand in line, I got the kid, whatever. And he'd come back with a, with a Cinnabon. He would come back with an Auntie Anne's pretzel bite. My husband was a net positive. Usually I was a baby, we didn't have kids. I was a baby melting down. If I said, fix it, he would fix it. I wouldn't even have to say it, he would fix it. He would know how, he would have a plan, he was on top of it. My ex-boyfriend, he was not another baby, he was 10 babies, he was all the babies. And he never had like a bad attitude, which was very, very helpful, but he, he had no logistical things that he was bringing to the table. And the worst part, the worst part is he fancied himself a very experienced traveler, very experienced traveler. I'm like, I cannot, you cannot get from the Bronx to Cobble Hill without having a fucking meltdown in the Uber. You can't do it. I've watched it. Like you cannot move through life. Men should be judged by their usefulness. If we're not judging men by their usefulness, their ability to earn, their ability to solve problems, their ability to protect and provide, what are we doing? I mean, come on. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we judging them by? Well, he loves me. Um, maybe the reason he loves you is because you require nothing of him. I wouldn't call that love. I would call that appreciation for your low self-esteem. I would call that war profiteering. You know, taking advantage of someone. I don't think of that as a positive thing. I want a man to love that I require him to be useful because he requires it of himself. And therefore, he will feel deeply seen and valued and validated when I'm like, you are a useful man. He'll be like, I know, thank you. The way I want a man to value and see and appreciate how loving I am. Because not everyone gets to see it. Not everyone gets to see how useful and protective and provider your man is. So how does this relate to travel? I love to plan trips, I do. It's like part of the fun of traveling is playing the trips, like looking at the flights, which a lot of people are like, oh, I can't do this. I geek on it, like I like to look at the hotels and I just think it's fun. I don't know, It's to me it's, it's part of the trip. Now, I am a very experienced traveler. My mom was a flight attendant growing up. I travel constantly now, like travel has never been something that's frightening to me. I'm not afraid of planes. I'm not afraid to be in foreign countries. I have an extremely high chaos tolerance. It's a psychological metric. I have an extremely high chaos tolerance. If I have a hoodie, a cell phone, my aquifer for my lips, and a credit card, you can throw me in any country in the world. I'm good. Like, I, I will swim, I, I'm fine. I can buy whatever I need, I can negotiate however I need to. And I've, I've been in some hairy situations. You guys maybe don't know this, but I got kidnapped in Africa when I was like 10. You know, shit happens, whatever, you move on. Of all the weird things I've been through, that's like the least traumatic, and I feel like it should. I think it's my mom spent her entire, the entire rest of my life gaslighting me that like it didn't happen and it wasn't a big deal. And like it did and it was, but. She's like, it was more of a hostage situation. Okay, sorry, <laughs> my mistake. You know, what every 10 year old deals with. They're reading the Ramona Quimby series from their hostage situation, as we know. So I think the first rule of traveling with your boyfriend 
ask him, sit him down and say, what is your ideal day on a vacation like this? And, and it's, it's contingent for what kind of vacation. Your ideal day in Italy is not gonna look like your ideal day in Cancun. Say you're going to Cancun, what is your ideal day? If he's like, we're up at six, we're doing sunrise yoga, we go to like a coffee grinding demonstration, then we go snorkeling, bah, 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 and you're like, I was thinking mimosas at 10, um, pool at noon to seven. You guys got to get really clear on how you vacation because this is the thing. Everyone assumes that everyone else does things their way. It's basically narcissism. Like, well, my way of vacationing is right. Like 10 a.m. mimosas, like that's what a vacation is. And other people are like, that is not what a vacation is. That's being a piece of shit, you know? And so, this is, this is true about things like having kids. Well, I know they're gonna change their mind and want them because you should want them and that's right. And again, this is why traveling is a microcosm of your relationship. It is a hyperlapse of your dynamic. If you guys both have this, this concept that like, well, the way I do it is right, so you're gonna have to meet me where I'm at. I'm not meeting you where you're at. Does that dynamic play out in other places? Are you unable to compromise? Are you unable to see how somebody else wants to be like, are you unable to meet in the middle? You know, uh, the guy I'm dating is, we're a lot alike in a lot of ways, but I, we haven't traveled yet, but I think that is gonna be like a differential because he likes mountains, he's super rugged. And I'm like, I will be elsewhere. I will be at a cafe. But I think if you can say that, it's like, okay, listen, from, in the morning until like 1 p.m., we do our own thing. I'm gonna get my social media time out. I'm gonna have my photo shoots. I'm gonna do my reels. I'm gonna be just like my lizard piece of shit time, reading my magazines, nobody bother me. And then after that, we come up with activities that we both do a line on. And we talk about compatibility, you know, the pillars of compatibility. And one of them is recreation. And again, this is why travel can be very significant, be very illuminating, you know? Because if you cannot come up with like, an activity to do in the afternoon that you both enjoy. I don't know, man, but how, hold on, hold on. It's not all doom and gloom. This is a chance as travel always is to discover. Isn't that the point? I never understand people who travel and they like only stay at the Hilton and they want to eat American food and they, it's like, just stay home, dude. If you're just trying to replicate where you live, stay home, man. So many people want to think of themselves as travelers. They're not. They might be vacationers, you know, they'll go to their timeshare at the Disney Aulani Hawaii Resort. Cool, I wouldn't say you are like immersed in Hawaiian culture. I'm like, I get in there, I get in there. I wanna dress local, I like to do photo shoots because that makes me, that, ooh, this bodysuit. It just makes me feel like part of it, you know? It's like, I wanna nail it. I wanna look like a local, I just, I don't know. I like it, I like to go to museums, I like to go on history walks, that's what I like to do. But a lot of people, you know, they don't. That's okay, whatever. We're not talking, whatever. Travel is a chance to discover. So if you're like, I don't know what a, my boyfriend and I both like to do, throw some shit out there. I plan a lot of my trips. This is not an ad, I'm just telling you, via Airbnb experiences. Like pretty much anywhere you go, there's like people, like local tour guides, and they like, there's photographers on there. There's, um, yeah, like history walks, pasta classes, bar crawls the fusion of all these things, like a pasta bar crawl, like a pasta crawl. And like, try some new shit. If you're like, well, I don't know if either one of us are gonna like that, great, great. If it's neutral for both of you, fucking try it. Go snorkeling, like do a glass bottom boat and see like, wow, maybe this is something we're both really into. You're into sea urchins, I'm into sea urchins. And then you're like the sea urchin couple. I mean, and what a cool origin story for something you guys get into, you know? It's like, hey, we never watched rugby until we were in Belize and it was all that was playing and we were like geeked on it. My husband and I, when we went to Jamaica one time, it was like pouring rain and we laid in bed and we watched Great British Bake Off and we'd never seen it. It like wasn't really a thing in America yet and he used like a VPN to connect through something and we were like gassed on it and we came home and we baked the things and it was like, it was a huge part of our relationship. Like we both loved to bake. And that never would have happened if we hadn't been on vacation and just tried something new. So don't stress too much over like, well, I don't know if we have the same styles. Now is your chance to really 
try things in an environment where trying things is encouraged. You know, it might be a, a bigger swing like in your hometown to be like, let's get into rugby. It's like, what? You know, but on vacation, maybe it's not weird at all. So that's step number one. Are we willing to vacation in the same way? Or at least find some common ground. I would also ask someone, because I ask this of my friends, because I like to travel with my friends, what defines success for you from a vacation? If you're like, oh, I feel weird about asking them their perfect day, what defines success? Because people are after very different things. Um, I, because I live in like Montana, when I travel to Europe, like I wanna go, go, go. I wanna be at like the coolest fucking parties, the exclusive members only clubs, like the VIP this. I need my fix of like glam. I need my fix of glam. Some people don't. They're like, I just kinda wanna cruise around, I wanna relax, like I don't, I relax where I live. But vice versa, it's like you need to ask someone, it's like, what are you hoping to get out of this vacation, okay? Now, with a couple's vacation, one of the big goals should be bonding, you know, quality time together. And so of course you want that to come up, but then it's like, okay, aside from that, do you wanna relax and recharge? Let's bring a bunch of magazines, OMG, let's take two shots of tequila in the Barnes & Noble parking lot, go in there and fuck up some magazines. Just fuck them up, get a bunch, I can't wait. You know, that could be, that's part of the trip planning that's like fun. But if they're like, I really want to like discover the culture, da, 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 and you're like, all right, well, I don't care about, I don't know, Italian culture. How could you not? It's so interesting. But you're like, okay, if that's your goal for travel, you don't, I don't care about Italian culture. I really care about Viking culture. What if we go to like a Viking land? You know, like maybe there's a way you can fit your interests in with theirs by kind of tailoring something a little bit. Number three, money. Girl, work this out ahead of time. Work this out ahead of time. These are not fun conversations, but again, but again, this is emblematic of your relationship. If you can't have these conversations, who's paying for what? Do we wanna split the Airbnb? Do you wanna get the hotels and I'll get all the food? Do we wanna like do a little slush fund together? Do you have points? Da, da, da. That's, it's a data point. It's a data point about your relationship. Hold on though. Like we were saying, well, I don't know what the activities would overlap. This is your chance. This is like an easy way to talk about these things because you have to. You know, you're not just sitting down a random Tuesday night be like, do you wanna talk about money? I have a real issue talking about money. Like I literally discussed this with my therapist. You know why? This is, I'm, about, I'm about to get dark, but when someone said this to me, it hit me so fucking hard and maybe it'll hit one, of, just one of you guys as hard, is because my father never paid my mother child support. Zero dollars. So my value is zero dollars as a person. Yeah. And so it's really hard for me to talk about money because it's talking about my value as a human. I know. So money is a very complicated thing and you guys have asked me to do like videos on money. Honestly, I'm figuring it out, dude. Like. I don't have a great relationship with money. My relationship is I just work so hard that I can buy whatever I want and I don't have to iron out my relationship with money. It's not good, it's not good at all. Anyway, this is a chance to bring it up because what if he's super weird about it? That's maybe something you need to know. It's like, well, you make more than me, so blah, 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 blah. or I make, I make all the money, so guess what? I'm gonna be making the decisions about where we eat and where we go. Huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And depending on the severity of your trip, whether it's two weeks in Italy or if it's just an overnight thing, it can, it can inform the severity of the conversation. It can just be a little like, hey, do you wanna share the Airbnb overnight in Wyoming or what do you think? I think men should pay for everything. Sorry, I think men should pay for everything. Another thing you need to figure out, what is your definition of comfort? What is your level of comfort in terms of travel? Surprise, fucking surprise, I am a luxury traveler. I've done my time, okay? I've done my time in low budget accommodations when I was a kid, like we, we didn't vacation when I was a child, we adventure traveled. I hiked the Amazon, I've climbed the Great Wall of China, the Galapagos, Egypt, like I said, the kidnapping, Bali, like I have, and like, done these places. I wasn't the Four Seasons when I was a kid. Like I was on safari, like I was climbing the pyramids and you know, we just came from a single mom. Like we were 
watching our pennies to do these, because we would go for like three weeks, you know? And it was cool because you really got to see the culture. I wasn't like the girl in the high tower, you know, just like peering down on the locals. Like I was, I was down in there and it was really amazing. It was such a great education for me. It gave me empathy and worldliness and perspective and gratitude, right? Um, now though, I want to be the girl in the high tower. I like luxury, you know, I do. I don't want to fly on some like rat ass Aeroflot airline that's held together with paper mache. I, I will never stay in a hostel my entire life. I don't need to stay in the Four Seasons. I mean, I like it, but I do have a level of comfort that I expect. And I like to be very clear about that with someone, which is why I think it's important to plan a trip together. Cause it's like, mm, I don't wanna stay there. You know, I can see their weird sheet situation. No, thank you. So again, make sure you have compatible ideas of comfort and or luxury or relaxation or whatever because there is literally nothing worse than when one person hates where you're staying or where you're eating or you know the bus find out where someone is willing to spend more money and where they're willing to cheap out because there's always like concessions it's like i don't care if we take a taxi from the airport to the hotel. It doesn't need to be like the luxury Mercedes van with the with the water and the champagne. I really don't care. Or maybe you don't care about the hotel room. Maybe you don't care about the restaurants. You're like, no, let's eat at like pokey stands in Maui. That sounds so cool. I don't need to go to these fancy ass places. But have these conversations, have these conversations. Because again, this is part of the fun. This is why planning is fun because again, what is travel about? It's about discovery, not just of where you're going, but about each other. You wanna go on trips with your boyfriend because you wanna spend time. You wanna have that like, ooh, that like deep dive, concentrated, amazing time together, learn about each other, maybe reach some new levels in your relationship. That starts before the plane even takes off. And I think we sometimes hesitate having these conversations because we don't wanna know the answer. Honey, everything's a negotiation. Everything's a negotiation. It doesn't have to be mean or dark. It can be, it's like, you know what? Screw it, let's get a nice hotel. I've never stayed at a nice hotel, why not? Let's ball it out. Maybe I'll really like this. It's about expanding your horizons. That's what travel in general is about. And like I said, that happens before the plane even takes off. If you're willing to like be a little brave and have some conversations. Now, let's get down to nitty gritty. The bathroom, girl. The bathroom situation. I am a very polite, elegant woman, okay? Never ever in my life have I pe peed with the door open. Never. Nor would I ever. I mean, with like my girlfriends maybe? I was a sorority girl. A man? I don't even let guys see me brush my teeth. Why would I? Why would I? And here's the thing, you can't answer that question. Hold on. Well, it brings us closer together. Why? That is not how I bond with people. I don't bond over bodily functions. I'm not an animal. You know who just loves to deal with bodily functions? My dog. Cowboy does. It's Weenusville all day long. He sees another Weenus, he's gotta go up to it. He's gotta sniff pee, okay? I'm not a dog, I'm a woman. People mistake rudeness for intimacy. They are not the same thing. I do not cultivate intimacy via bodily functions. The only bodily functions that are involved in intimacy are sexual ones, okay? Therefore, traveling can be a bit of a nightmare for me because yeah, I just, I will make trips to the hotel lobby. Oh gosh, I just, Oh, beep, bop, boop. I'm not getting any reception in this room. Let me just go down to the lobby. I'll be back in 15. Okay. You go to the restaurant at the, at the hotel, or no, you go to the bathroom at the hotel restaurant. Okay. If you have some hacks for this, let me know. I literally can't even talk about it. I can't even talk about it. Uh, look, I'm getting all red. I'm breaking out in hives. I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I was raised by very elegant women and this was just not, no, this is, uh-uh, mm -mm, nope. Um, I'm not the kind of woman who like will wake up at 5 a.m. and put on her makeup and be like, oh, 
ah, oh, I just woke up. Oh yeah, I woke up like this. No, I don't do that. Um, but mm -mm. so that is something to be aware of. <laughs> that is something to be aware of. And if you do, if you are the kind of girl who's like, I don't want a guy to see me like put on my full makeup and we're sharing a bathroom and like, it then it might be in your best interest to get an Airbnb that has two bathrooms. Hotels like never do. They fucking never do, you know? But a hotel does have maid service, which can be very nice. It's like, I'm not picking up after a guy, you know? So think about that. Think about that. Don't don't freak out. But like I like I like a reveal. I like the Cinderella moments. I call it where it's like a guy picks me up and it's like Rah! I'm not like hold on I'm in my pajamas still. I've got one eyebrow on. Like I like I like a reveal. I think it's very. I'm just kind of a cinematic person. Like my seductive type is the star, and so you know I like a big. Huh, I like a razzle dazzle. However, you know. That is also a problem in my relationships and vulnerability and letting people in. And so travel can be difficult for me in that sense because it's like, fuck, there's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide. Like you're gonna have to see how the sausage is made a little bit. Again, like travel's gonna tell us a lot about our relationships and, and about ourself. So what do you do if you're dealing with someone, maybe you're very well traveled and he isn't, okay? Godspeed, girl. Give him tasks. Give that man assignments. Be like, listen, you are in charge of getting us, of everything with wheels. Everything with wheels. Our Uber to the airport, our Uber to the hotel, um, our excursion bus is gonna take us out to snorkel, booking our thing back, to, whatever. Anything with wheels, that's you, babe. Or you're in charge of all the food. We got to have reservations where we're going. Um, let's, we can freestyle for lunch. Let's say we'll just wander around and see what's good. But I would love if you had kind of a short list going of like places we want to eat in Rome. But dinners, like I would love to have those squared away. Reservations, vibe, you know, vibe suggestions, outfit suggestions. That's all you. Okay. That's going to give him a metric of success. Because guys are just little boys who still need like a gold star from teacher slash mommy. I know. Yeah. I mean, we kind of all are. But... People, especially men, work well. They wanna be useful. Show them what that means. Show them what success looks like. Because then, if they fuck it up, you can be like, I asked you to work this out. One thing I noticed with guys in traveling is when they would ask me something they could Google, and I would say, I have the same Google you do, Jeff, okay? Like, you need to be proactive in this. If I have to hold your hand through it, it's actually not something off my plate. I'm dealing with the hotel. I'm dealing with this, da, 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 da. I need you, I need you to do your part. That's also something. That's also something to behold. And you know, I think we as women have the right to take travel and like, and be very kind of, I hate to say this, a little judgy about it. Because listen, a trip with no children, a couple's trip, is like a regular day at home with children in terms of variables, foresight needed, division of labor. Do you know what I mean? It's like traveling just the two of you has like 10 variables. A day at your house with a toddler, I would say 10 to 12 variables as well. Are they gonna melt down over the chicky tendies? I don't know, man, very possibly. And so when I see a guy who can't fucking travel, I'm like, you can't be a dad. You can't dad me around this island. You can't shepherd me around. How are you going to deal with a child melting down in Target? You know, I'm, I know it's, it's tough because you want you want to travel and you want to have these experiences. And like I said, most people don't travel. Oh, do you want to hear a statistic? Okay. So one of my guy friends, he's a venture capitalist and he did work for American Airlines. And he said that on any given flight, 80% of the people on that flight are taking their only round trip flight of the year. That's it. 80%. From the remaining 20%, 10% of those people are only taking two round trip flights a year. So there's, oh, on any given flight, 10% of people, not many, travel more than twice a year. 
That's why no one can figure out what the fuck they're doing. They're like, what is a seatbelt? Like they just can't, because they, they don't do this. And I can cast a lot of judgment. I know I'm being a real bitch about it because I travel like, I mean, I think I've been to two or three countries this year so far. I, I honestly lose track. I lose track. Yeah, I think I've been to three countries. I don't know. I don't know. So we have to, if we're experienced travelers, we do maybe have to cut some people some slack. It's like, what if you were thrown onto like a crab fishing boat in Alaska? You're like, I don't, I, I don't know what I'm like doing here. Okay, so maybe they're in their own sort of crab fishing boat scenario also. That's why, give them tasks, give them tasks. And let them know what success looks like. Be like, hey, I would love it if you can take over the food and not just take it over, but like, don't ask me about it, you know? Like, you have complete ownership. And maybe ask my opinions, but like, I really need you to come up with the websites where people are talking about restaurants in Rome. Like, I, I have a lot going on planning the tours and the, 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 this is your time to shine, babe. Give people metrics. I also would greatly, greatly advocate for solo time, for solo time. Or as one of my exes calls it, no pants days. <laughs> like he will travel like for a week or two and he's like, I build in a no pants day. One day a week is a no pants day where I don't leave the room, I don't put on pants, I order room service, I just veg out. Because travel burns you out. You know, you are, again, the chaos tolerance, like things that you were on autopilot for, getting your coffee, ordering of this, like everything requires so much effort, so much thinking, so much disruption. Even if you can get your coffee easily, maybe it's not how you take your coffee and you're like, ah, this isn't the right oat milk, whatever. So I would really encourage you to build in that just like veg out day. It's like, we have no plans today. We have none, we have no plans. And make that a bonding day. Make that a fun, you know, Mexican diet pill meth out day, whatever. Or be like, hey, from four to six every day, I gotta have my alone time. And maybe you're just doom scrolling on the beach you're taking selfies, you're taking pictures of your own ass, drunk, in the pool bathroom. Not like I've done it, I do it constantly, I do it constantly, I love it. But that's your time. And he can go work out, he can go do whatever. And if you need to be like, that's just the time I'm gonna need to go work, I'm gonna go back to the room and just, just have some alone time. I'm an only child, I live alone. I need a lot of alone time. No matter how much I love someone, I just need like a beat. I need like a good two hours a day on my own. And if you think maybe that's like gonna be difficult to say to your partner, you know, if they might take that the wrong way, build it in, be like, hey, I'm gonna go to the gym. Like something he won't wanna do. Like in the morning, you sleep in, I'll go and get the coffees. Like you might have to wake up a half hour earlier so you can just go down to the lobby and zen out for a little bit and, and have your space. Because the last thing you wanna do is get really sick of each other. One of the big, tar pits that you can encounter when you travel that I worry about is you run out of things to say because you're on a never ending date and you realize it's like, I never spent more than four hours with this person and now we are together for 200 hours or something. Like it's, what do you do when you just run out of shit to say? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Can you help me? Can you, can you seriously like leave some ideas in the comments? So the New York Times, I think, a few years ago did this whole list. It was like, it might've been 100, it might've been 30, I don't know. It was a big list of questions to ask your partner, basically for this, like topic starters, like conversation starters, whatever. I know that there's like those little decks of cards, like you pull one out and it's got like sometimes a fun question, a sexy question. Bring shit like that along. I don't think there's anything wrong either in general or anything wrong with your relationship. If you're like, I don't know, at some point we're kind of gonna run out of things to say. And if you're in like a car trip or whatever, or you're just laying on the beach, that's no big deal that you're silent. But if you're sitting across from someone at dinner and you're like, it can, when that's happened to me, like I've almost started to cry because I'm like, oh my God, like our relationship is imploding. We have nothing to say. I'm stuck here. What if we never come up with something to say? What if we never have anything to say to one another ever again? And honestly, one trip, we never had anything else to say. We, that was true. That we hit a wall in Denver, out to breakfast, when I was asking him about things and getting one word answers. And I remember thinking in that moment, I, I need to go get on a plane home. And I didn't. And honestly, I should have, I should have. I'm not saying that you should do this, but it was, 
It was a hyperlapse of our relationship. It really was. But sometimes it's like, you know what? This is nice to just sit in silence and you don't have to be like, like jabbering like a monkey on crack all the time. And just, we can just be here and I can read it over and squeeze his hand and he's reading the paper and I'm just looking out at the sea and I'm like, because you know, real relationships, marriages, long-term things, we live with someone, it isn't like, like eventually you kind of do run out of stories and funny anecdotes and like, there's not much to say about your day. It's like, no, it's good, it's fine, just work. And if you're like, <gasps> and if you need to keep that like machine running, first of all, guys don't like it. They view it as, that is truly the root of what men view as high maintenance, is a woman who cannot shut up, who can't just relax into silence, you know? Because eventually, if you don't have something to talk about, you'll figure something out. And you know what? It'll be something bad. A lot of times, like you'll pick a fight, you'll nag about something, you'll drudge up an issue. Well, what do you think about kids? And he's like, Kristen, I swear to God, we have talked about this 10 times. You know, you'll like kind of just scratch at something just to see what happens. It is a skill. It is a life skill to be able to sit in silence, not just with another person. That's like the top of the peak, right? With yourself. If you're in the Chalantrage, you've watched me do this work over the last two years of just like, I'm okay. Boredom isn't gonna kill me. Silence isn't gonna kill me. Staying home isn't gonna kill me. Feeling my feelings isn't gonna kill me. And because I was able to do that, I've been able to craft better and better and better relationships. And like, not like I'm engaged or anything, but like I'm closer to the mark every single time. And I really think that that's the root of it. And so now, because I've kind of like slayed that beast in myself, I'm excited to travel with the next guy that I date. You know, maybe this one, whatever. I'm excited because it's like, I know we'll be okay. Like wandering around together, being quiet, reading our paper, sitting at dinner. It's not going to have to be like, like the chat factory. But if you are worried, yeah, come up with some like questions to ask, some open-ended, open-ended questions. And preferably ones that aren't just about your relationship. So where do you see us in five years? Would you still love me if I was a worm? Things about, you know, just, just open it up a little, open it up a little. Honestly, if you have some good questions like that, like conversation starters, please leave them down below in the comments. I will be screenshotting because, you know, I think that it's always good to have these things in our back pocket. We wanna keep our mind sharp, but not veer into that like because surprise, I can fucking talk, right? All somebody has to do really is just point a phone at me like I'm recording and I'm like, so anyway, hey guys, welcome back. It's like I just go into like jibber jabber mode. It's not great. Another thing you might find illuminated is people's devotion to things, to things. Some people when they travel, they go like super streamlined. You know, they just shove everything in a backpack. I um, do not like to travel with these people because I don't understand them. No. People, I, I pack exactly as heavy as you would expect me to pack, but you know what? I don't ask anyone else to deal with my suitcases or pay for the overage fees. I am good. I would rather have everything I need and maybe a little bit more because there's nothing worse than when I travel and I'm like, fuck, I need to like run around and like find a scar for these socks don't work. I brought the wrong shoes. I would rather have my options so that when I'm there, I have everything that I need. And I just like to look how I look. I don't expect other people to vibe with that, but I also don't want to be on a trip with them. <laughs> like, I don't want to be on a trip with you if you wear like two outfits over and over and you have jackets that like wad into like a square. What is that? What is that? No, that's, we're not compatible. No, thank you. So you might find that like a guy brings like a million gadgets, you know, like it's like, oh, he relies a lot on like things to feel good or vice versa, vice versa. It's like, oh, he's a pretty pared down person. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up. If you have some travel questions, now that I'm like started, you know, knee deep in this video, I'm like, maybe we should just do a travel tips video. So if you want, leave your questions, your travel questions for me down in the comments and maybe I'll do, I'll do a video just like answering them. Because like I said, I travel a lot. I've got packing kind of down to a science. Even though I pack heavy, 
because I take pictures and I have like specific outfits and blah, 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 blah. Like I look how I wanna look, but I am still actually a very efficient packer, very efficient. So that I have room to bring five bags because I have nice bags and guess the fuck what? No one in Montana cares or wants to see them. So I'm like, I gotta go to Paris to travel for my bags. I need to take my bags on vacation. I need to take my wardrobe on vacation. Um, I can tell you how I avoid jet lag. Although maybe I can, maybe I can't. I um, don't get jet lagged. It's like my one physical superpower. I think everyone has a physical superpower and that's just mine because I can always sleep and I can always eat. And my body just, I don't know. I'm just kind of born to travel, I'm born to run. But yeah, leave your conversation topics down below. Leave your travel questions. We'll do a video on that. Um, and yeah, we will see you guys later. Tell me also what you think about Travis and Taylor. Do you still think that this is a PR relationship or are you like, ugh, all right, fine. This looks to be real. I will see you later, Shalligators. Mwah!